Worlds collide in today's movie roast as Doctor Strange goes up against the Scarlet Witch. Who will win in the end? Certainly not the audience. Let's roast! The producer on this roast is birthday girl Jan Rose. She thought for her big day, what's better than blowing out the candles, signing up for a Mithril membership at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies, and making this poor bastard roast a disappointing sequel in the MCU. Doctor Strange, the Multiverse of Madness! Thank you for being an awesome supporter, Jan, and happy birthday. Let's roast. We open. In green screen world. Benedict Cucumber Patch and some new girl are running from a giant monster. Doctor Strange is sporting the same haircut my 8th grade music teacher had. He was in a band. Spoiler. They didn't last. And neither does this Doctor Strange, but we'll get there in a second. Ponytail McGee attempts to take Dora the Explorer's superpowers, which in the process will kill her. But at the end of the day, one life pales in comparison to that of the entire multiverse. Needless to say, it's a bold strategy, Cotton. One that doesn't pay off. Before he has the chance to Shang Tsung her, she opens up a portal and sucks them both inside. We transition to a shirtless Benedict Cumbersnatch. This is the one we fell in love with. Not that horse-haired bastard who's probably dead. Now, when I first saw this scene, I thought he was attending a funeral for the MCU, but uh, for Strange, it's much worse. It's Christine's wedding! Some dude moseys up to him in the pew, but I am absolutely transfixed by the woman behind Strange. This extra is absolutely out of control. Look at this bitch. She's so lost in the architecture around her. It's like she's never seen a building before. There's our mean girl, Regina. She's so hot right now. Regina. <laughs> a car crash interrupts a lovely conversation. All right, what is happening with this extra? Who's pulling my chain here? She's double taking in the same shot. I don't care who you are, that is fucking cool. An alien squid is attempting to capture Stargirl. I don't know her name at this point, so I'm just gonna call her different things. Strange cuts a bus in half. This is the 80th time a bus has been destroyed in a superhero film. Just recently we had Blue Beetle, Shang-Chi, and Captain Marvel. The girl is starting to run from the tentacle creature, and now this is starting to look like something I saw online once. It did not end the most pleasurably for the young woman in the video, at least not at first. Also, I lied a second ago. I've seen several of that type of video. Let's move on. Get over here! Wong joins the fight. <laughs> Christine's like, ugh, I cannot believe he's ruining my big day! After a pretty slick action sequence, Doctor Strange rips out a pole in the ground, throws it through the alien's eye. Well, aren't you a sight for sore eyes? I'm not so sure Visine's gonna help on this one. Okay, I'm done. They have an okay meal together where Jean Jacket explains how she's met a different Doctor Strange and she liked that one more. Just to recap, she just said she liked the guy more that tried to kill her no more than five minutes earlier than the dude that just saved her life. She prefers the other guy. I know this is a comedic joke. It's not funny. It doesn't make sense. Why would she say that? She should be like incredibly scared for her life right now, but eh, I like the other guy better. American Flag Co. talks to him about the Book of Ashanti. She also explains how she can travel the multiverse accidentally. She has powers. She's not sure how she can control them. I bet by the end of this film, she learns how. Yeah, it turns out that other Doctor Strange is in fact dead. He doesn't look great, yet Benedict Cumberbatch still looks more regal than I do, even in death. <laughs> that son of a bitch. We also get the girl's name. America Chavez. They also determine that the creature that's stalking her isn't using conventional magic. It's using bitchcraft. No, that can't be. Checks notes. Uh, witchcraft. So Doctor Strange turns to the baddest bitch he knows. <laughs> Wanda. He meets up with her and they have a nice heart to heart in a meadow. She briefly mentions her Disney Plus show that not even half the audience watched and will be absolutely confused at this turn of character. Shortly after, she reveals this whole thing was a ruse and she's in fact the Scarlet Witch and the one behind all of this. She wants America Chavez's power so she can hop through the multiverse and get some kids of her own. I don't know why I'm so aggressive right now. Bottom line, the Wanda we knew and love is gone. The darkness has a hold of her in the form of the Darkhold. It's pretty on the nose, but it works. It has clearly infected her, clouding her mind, 
poisoning her judgment, taking away her ridiculous accent that she once in a while used in past films. That doesn't seem fair. It's at this point in the MCU that you are completely on board, soaking in every piece of content from TV to movie, or you are out of the loop and have no idea what's going on. The funny thing is I watched WandaVision and this still makes no sense. How they treated this character, Wanda, is absolutely insane. If you're going to take a character who's been good through several movies and overcome some pretty harsh obstacles, you have to build up a better turn. You have to make this villain really believable. You can't just throw it at the end of a Disney Plus miniseries. Wong, Strange, and a bunch of disposable soldiers have very little time to prepare because Wanda's on her way to capture America Chavez. We have a synchronized drum line as our troops get battle ready. And Pokemon Taurus is here. Looks to be a shiny. There's a storm coming. The world is a vampire. <laughs> Do not speak to me of sacrifice, Stephen Strange. Mm. She called him Stephen. That's how you know mom's pissed. The sorcerers put up a Harry Potter shield. The witch finds a chink in the armor in the form of a weak sorcerer. She whispers sweet nothings into his ear. Run. Yeah. And now this is the only way I can achieve climax. Hadouken! She throws a fireball, destroying all the shields. After busting up shop, Maximus steps on an inception switch, which sends her directly to jail. Play dumb games, win dumb prizes. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest Olsen of them all? It's you, Elizabeth. It was always you. I'm not a monster, Steven. I'm a mother. Oh my god, she starts bitching again about not having kids and how she'll scour the multiverse to grab some of her own, even if that means killing off a former version of herself. The MCU has done some pretty impressive character assassination over the years, but the botched job they've done on Wanda in this film. Truly chef's kiss. Stardust punches out another multiverse hole, and her and Strange are off to the races again. They're now Tokyo rifting throughout the multiverse. I think Wanda threw a magic tracker on Strange right before he went through the portal. It doesn't really matter though. This VFX sequence is awesome. It's really good looking. And it's also the exact same as the one we just got recently in The Rise of Shitwalker. Both are very cool 30 seconds of movie. Yep. <laughs> there it is. And we're back. Welcome to New York. It's been waiting for you. We have a Sam Raimi standard cameo by Bruce Campbell. He's handing out hot dogs and insults. Actually, America stole some food, so he's a little perturbed. He insults them, and Doctor Strange does a reasonable counter by hitting him with a spell that makes him kick the crap out of himself. Funny little retaliation, until you find out it lasts for three weeks. This poor bastard's going to be liar liaring himself for three weeks. He will be dead after a day. Look at how much damage he's doing to his body in this short amount of time. This is sick shit. And again, not a thought out joke because it makes our hero look insane. It makes him look incredibly disturbed. That man is dead by the hands of Strange. All for what? Hot dog? Strange and Chavez use a memory machine, which bring him a little history lesson. Eggs Benedict is presented with a boring dinner date and America gets a few more seconds with her moms. Lesbians. Hot. Hot. Ah, a bee! Fuck you! <laughs> Moms get absolutely wrecked, shot through a portal, probably to their death. This is the MCU, probably not. We'll see them in Avengers 25. They're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of strange. He might know where they can find the who's a whatchamacallit. I already forgot what they're doing. I think they're going after a second book that counters the dark hold. But I think reading's for nerds, so I started dozing off when they talked about books. Unfortunately, in this universe, Doctor Strange is already dead. Thankfully, Mordo's here to save the day. Wait, Mordo? What? He was the bad guy from the first film, I think. I forgot all about that movie. He's the Sorcerer Supreme here. And he came with notes. Very convenient amount of information for Doctor Strange to hear. He talked about how Wanda can now dream walk into different bodies using the Darkhold. He mentioned the mysterious Illuminati, who we're gonna find out more from very soon. I'm excited. 
see how much is left of this film before it's done. I just hope for the sake of the multiverse, Wanda doesn't know about this cockamamie dream walk, and she's doing it already. Turns out once a dick, always a dick. Mordo's betrayed Doctor Strange and America. He cosbeed the punch, causing the screen to go all 90s stretch effect, knocking Strange and America out. At the new Wanda residence, the witch is coming by to babysit. Okay, this Wanda's either being possessed right now, or she's having one of the most intense orgasms of her life. For me, it's the latter. She checks on her two sons, who are bickering, of course, as all kids do, and now they're singing the shittiest song I've ever heard in my life. I have a feeling that if Scarlet Witch spends even 20 minutes with these little brats, she might drop this whole Darkhold thing altogether. Just walk away, chalk it up as a bad idea. Call it a loss, become an Avenger again. It, it was just a blip, it was just a little bump, speed bump in her journey of life. Meanwhile, one of the surviving disposable sorcerers finds Wong. Instead of freeing him like any sensible person would do, she opts to destroy the book herself. It doesn't go great. Toasty! Both her and the book are destroyed in the process. Well, I mean, that's game over. She's a hero. Except for Wong informs the rest of us that that was actually a copy of the real Darkhold. Sure, okay. Why not? Nothing really matters in this movie. It's the multiverse. Scarlet Witch Hansen is not thrilled about this news. And unfortunately, the Sorcerer Supreme was in the Wong place at the Wong time. In a polycarbonate prison. Universe 838 Christine speaks to 616 Doctor Strange. They number the universes here, it's a whole thing. Also 616 sounds really close to 626, which is Stitch from Lilo and Stitch, so it kind of throws me a bit. These guys are in the cell because they're being examined for potentially bringing over a bunch of dangerous diseases. Who's to say? Road trip! Wanda and Wong, or Wandong for short, that's not great. Head up the mountainside to a quaint little resort. The current inhabitants are very welcoming, even bowing to the antagonist. A door carving has been erected in her honor. What is she, Mr. Beast here? <laughs> That's someone people watch on YouTube, right? I'm relevant. Subscribe. Not as pleasant are the going-ons with the Illuminati. These guys are incorrigible. This group of highly skilled, highly intelligent individuals will surely not disappoint. Roll call! We have Captain I Google This Actress Once a Day Carter. Random task. BLM Captain Marvel. Yes, two captains on the team. Quite a find. And Mr. Fanservice. And that pretty much rounds out the Illumin- You should tell him the truth. Oh my god! Wait, pause. Is that Patrick fucking Stewart? Fangasm! They're even playing the classic X-Men cartoon theme. We have the cartoon, Professor X. This movie is now perfect. And don't worry, other members. He brought his own chair. <laughs> because he's crippled. Back at Sauron's tower, Wanda throws Wong off the side of the cliff. I guess the road trip's over. And he's surely dead because they spent two seconds showing him fall, a character who's been in several MCU movies at this point. Toss him over the cliff, he's done. Yeah, I'm sure he won't come back later. We learned that Doctor Strange didn't actually die at the hands of Thanos, but that of the Illuminati. They do give him the most honorable death one could receive at his level. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He was yelled at. All right, mommy's home. And she's not happy. Dipshits! Assemble. Reed Richards, one of the smartest men alive, uses one of his very precious lines of dialogue to tell Wanda their most powerful member of the team can destroy you by opening his mouth. Black Bolt could destroy you with one whisper from his mouth. Smart. Very smart. I mean dumb. Fucking dumb. She seals that cake hole up like Agent Smith did to Neo. He panics like all great superheroes do and gives himself a brain aneurysm. We have a real crack squad team here. Big Tuna gets paper shredded. Captain Carter says the thing. I could do this all day. And then is immediately killed by her own shield. How embarrassing. Captain Marvel's crushed by a statue. Feel like that death was a bit phoned in, but to be fair, this entire character is, so it fits. 
It's unclear where Professor X is at during this, how he didn't sense the danger and the trouble going on. Perhaps he took longer to get there because the place isn't wheelchair accessible. I don't know. Oh, here he is. Thanks for coming. He enters her mind, finding himself in a room whiter than my grandpa's high school yearbook. Surely they won't bring back the legendary Patrick Stewart just to kill him in some cheap- <laughs> And he's dead. It's a good thing we established this whole multiverse thing in the MCU so that nothing really has any stake or consequence. Anybody that's dead here can just show up in a different form. The possibilities are endless. And you can catch them all on some mediocre Disney Plus TV shows. Wanda's back in pursuit, now in her final form. Omega Karen. She pulls on Starburst's hair, which opens a fresh portal. Strange gets thrown into one for the 80th time, along with Christine. America gets to finally meet the real Queen Bee. The Avenger and Futuristic Tracksuit are in a pretty bad situation. They have been sent to a universe where two worlds have collided. Power Man 5000 warned us about this, people. We should have listened. Steven enters Disney's Haunted Mansion. He looks to himself for help. It's confusing. This Strange is guarding the Darkhold, which you can see in further detail by watching Disney's What If on Disney+. Plus. Hope you did your fucking homework before you watch this movie. Evil Strange reveals a third eye blind. And now it's time for them both to face the music. Literally. Dueling Pianos takes on a new meaning as the brothers Strange start hurling musical notes at one another. Sam Raimi went all in on this concept. It's fucking Fantasia up in this bitch. Oh my gosh, I forgot about Wong entirely. In a shock to absolutely no one, he's still alive. He uses Wonder Woman's lasso of truth to pull himself up the hill. Wanda is really taking her time extracting those powers from Chavez. How long does this take, honestly? Strange uses the dark hole to walk into a thriller music video, possesses his own body that was previously dead, and awakens a bunch of evil spirits that he takes hold of. He does all of this, plus all the recent stuff, before Wanda has a chance to suck out that soul power. I mean, what the hell, Wanda? What's going on with you? Strange has arrived, and he's brought with him the worst line of the film. This time it's gonna take more than killing me to kill me. Bad. It's given me shades of, I put him in a hole, and I threw away the hole. The Taco Sorcerer Supreme wrongfully suggests they take America Chavez's powers so that Wanda can't get them. But Doctor Strange isn't having it. He says, no, we need to trust in America. Big mistake. Let's hope this works because Wanda just broke free of her Pokeball and she's ready to fight. Shot out of a fucking cannon, One Punch Girl decks Wanda with a powerful right hook from the top rope. She knocks her so hard she ends up in another universe. Oh god, she's back with those bratty kids. Why does she want these little shits? Also, they're watching Bambi? Really? Out of all the offerings available, you go with Bambi? Come on. Elizabeth Olsen is now touching herself. And so am I. Scarlet Witch understands what she has done, and now she wants to put an end to it. Which means putting an end to herself. Along with destroying all copies of the Darkhold. She gets crushed by a bunch of crap. No one checks to see if she's alive or not. She is. We know she is. And she'll return in Avengers 45. Benedict come in her butt, sims for Christina a little more before saying goodbye to Wong and also America. The, the person, not the, not the country. Don't worry, America Chavez will return in Avengers 18. The film ends with a classic Sam Raimi twist. Stephen Strange falls to the ground and he too now has an evil third eye. Aye, aye, aye. This guy's a real looker. Hey Quicksilver, I bet you didn't see that coming. Okay, I'm, I, I have to be done with this. We have an end credit scene, folks. Charlize Theron shows up wearing one of the dumbest, ugly fucking looking suits I've ever seen in the MCU or really in a superhero movie full stop. Strange jumps through the 45th portal of the movie. This is dumb and I hope it leads to nothing. Well, there you have it. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Midness. A messy, rushed sequel that barely focuses on the main character, focuses on ruining a secondary character and doesn't utilize Sam Raimi to his full potential. This movie feels very edited down. That said, I've seen far worse. Far worse. A huge thank you once again to Jan for producing this video, along with a tip of the hat to all patrons at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies and YouTube join members. Make sure to 
cast a spell on the like button, hit that subscription too, so that these start showing up. And if they're not, you might need to, you know, like wiggle your dick around up to that notification bell so they start propagating in your feed properly. That way you won't miss a single movie review, rant, live stream, or movie roast in the future. And I'd love to have you stick around. All right, take care.